So let me walk you out through my little vocal chain real quick. This pretty much applies to 90% of the vocals that I mix in life. Um, my process is usually, if the vocals need to be tuned, I do tuning first. Let me, um, let me make this track super, super, duper big so you can see. Um, yeah. So, but you can see here. So I usually start with um, tuning. Um, with Akon, the retune speed is going to be down to zero because he likes it to sound really robotic. Um, so if, if there's any tuning to be done, I'll do tuning first. My next step is usually de-essing. Um, for those of you who may not know what that is, it's just simply exactly what it sounds like. You're removing the S's and the sibilant frequencies. Um, and I usually tend to DS at about 42, 37. That's my number of choice. All, most S's and most annoying frequencies fall right around there. I've grown to learn over the years. And uh, you, do, you DS based on what you're given. Sometimes it's, it, there's no specific formula. There's just, I listen, I use my ears, um, and I just kind of DS based on how many S's I'm dealing with. Um, from there, I compress. Um, Light compression, um, nothing too crazy. You, the, the, to me, the rule of thumb with compression is if you hear it working too hard, you're probably compressing a little too much. And that, to me, that applies to vocals. Certain instruments, or like a bass, you can kind of hear the compression, and you may like the compression. The compression may be something that you, you, you actually use to your advantage. But with vocals, I tend to not want to hear the compressor working. When I hear it working, I feel like I'm doing too much, and I back off. Um, and then I move to the EQ. Uh, in this case, mine was a SSL, but I don't know if Darren might not have the exact same SSL on here, but I'll find one that I like. I usually go with a SSL. Uh, I guess let's try this one to see what it's doing. Uh, am I a mono track? Yeah, why not? Boom, I do that a lot too. I talk to myself, nope, that's not the one I need. I talk to myself all the time, um, and forget y'all if y'all think that's crazy. I don't care, huh? I respond too. Like, I don't care if you think I'm crazy. I'm fine with that. I'm confident in who I am. So you think I'm crazy if you want to? That's right. I said it. Um, so my EQing will probably look a lot like. Um, let's see. I may roll off um, some low end. Here, um, I might do a little something like that. I might do a look, take down a little bit here on the in that real boxy, annoying boxy. I might cut a little high mids in here. I might spread the bell out so that it covers a few more frequencies, and I'm pulling down some of those high frequencies a little bit. And then I might boost a little top end just for the crispy. And that might sound terrible, but I don't know. I don't know this room very well. This is not the ideal environment to mix in. So, you know, uh, let's see. It's like that I leak and cost you a whole lot. So just based on what, I hear, what I'm hearing, again, this is not an ideal environment to mix in. So I'm only responding to what I hear. It's like um, that I leak and cost you a whole lot. You can come get up, it's gonna cost you a whole lot. So I might pull down some of the low end so it doesn't sound too muffled and it, it really cuts through the frequencies. <laughs> 